Hi, I'm Jennifer from CGJC Tools and today we're going to be making this. This is part 3 of a video series. Part 1 we modeled and in part 2 we created the UVs. Here in part 3 we're going to begin shading and setting up our basic light and render setup. If you haven't checked out the other videos, the links are in the description. Now let's dive into part 3. Once we have the UVs complete, I like to create the shader and the basic light setup before I begin texturing. Some of these shader attributes are going to determine how I texture. The first thing I'm going to do is change my workspace to rendering standard and adjust my windows by clicking and dragging them into place. Since we are using Arnold to render, we need a light source. Otherwise, Arnold will just render black. I like to start off with a dome light. You just click this icon and an invisible sphere with light appears. If I hit render, you can see the light is pure white and surrounds my scene. By default, the model in Maya has a Maya Lambert shader, which is gray. We have to switch this shader out for an Arnold standard shader. By right clicking and selecting assign new shader, then we can search for the AI standard shader. This shader has many attributes to achieving many different looks and has several different presets. I'm going to start off with the gold preset since it's most similar to my bell. Now, if we render, we can see that the gold metal doesn't look so good because this environment is just pure white. So I'm going to change my light by adding an HDRI image to the color path. I have a folder here with several HDRIs. If you don't know what this is, it stands for a high dynamic range image. It has more than 8 bits of data per pixel per channel. The color value of the image can be used as a light source in a 3D environment like this one. It is often used in feature film when trying to blend a 3D object with a real world scene. You can get a lot of HDRIs for free on HDRI Haven. It's this website here. And you can use all of the HDRIs for any use for commercial purposes. I like to grab a few of these and test my object to see what it would look like in different lighting scenarios. Usually I'll grab a daytime, a nighttime sunset, a white studio, maybe a summer versus winter, just to see how my shader is looking. All of these different lighting setups are good for testing. I like this one the best to test metal because it's, there's a lot of things for the metal to reflect and it's a natural outdoor lighting. Off the bat, if I hit render, it looks pretty good. In the shader, we can see these different settings. If I tone down the metalness, you can see that it has some effect on the reflection of the object, but it doesn't completely get rid of the reflection. Yet, if I adjust specular roughness, we can see that it does become either really matte or really reflective of an object, depending if I increase or decrease. Specular weight doesn't have too much effect because metalness is on all the way. So metalness and specular weight go hand in hand together. Both of those things are being multiplied along with the specular roughness. But you can see here that the specular roughness is what really determines the reflections of my object. And if we also change color, you can see that our shader does change. So with those things in mind, we can begin painting and texturing. So we're going to be painting maps for our base color and specular roughness. At the end, we will also be painting a bump map, but we'll discuss this later. The reason we're creating a map for specular roughness and color is because we want to make things like dust, dirt, scratches, smudges clearly visible in our render. Whenever there's dirt, dots, scratches, anything like this, our reflections will be less in those areas and more in the areas where it's clean. Therefore, we have to paint different values in those regions. We also want the same region to have different color. When it comes to painting 3D models, we have to use another program. Programs like Substance Painter, Mari, Mudbox, or 3D painting softwares are perfect for something like this. In those programs, when you paint, you can paint directly on the model and the paint is applied to the UV map where it's supposed to go. However, for people who are just starting out, what I really recommend is that you do at least one model like this through Photoshop. Because if you experience what it's like painting in 2D first, you'll appreciate 3D more and you'll understand what is so important about your UV map looking good. With that said, we need to export our UV maps and save it as a file that we can open in Photoshop. We can just come to the UV editor and go to Image, UV Snapshot. Then change the setting for resolution and file format. I like TIFF because it has some transparency. For resolution, it really depends on how close you're going to get to the object and how big you're rendering. I'm going to use a 2K image for this and then open up Photoshop. Inside Photoshop, I'm going to open the UV snapshot. Next, I'm going to select the same gold color that I have in Maya and use it as a base color. I'll just use the paint bucket to fill the entire layer with that color. 
The next thing really depends on how you like to paint. I like to paint my bolder colors first, and I like to separate everything out into layers. This way I have control for individual things, and it's especially good to paint in separate layers because some of those layers I'm going to adjust in the specular, and some of them I'm not necessarily going to want to adjust or change in the specular or my bump map or any other map that I might have to make. Having everything separate makes it a lot easier when you're creating other texture maps later on. So when I paint, I'm going to start with the dirt that's going to be created on the crevices. So you see here, I'm just going to paint right here along this edge. And the reason I'm painting on this edge is because I know that's the crevice. So if I go back to Maya and I select the edge in my 3D model where one of the crevices are, you can see that it also highlights that same edge in the UV map. So I know that in the UV map, that's the crevice. And when I go to Photoshop, that's the edge that I've got to paint with my dirt. So I'm just going to paint this one line. And when I'm done painting it, I'm just going to save it really quick as a JPEG. And I'm going to bring it into Maya so you can see how it looks. So in order to do that, under my Sh Arnold shader node, I'm going to go here to color, click on the checkerboard, click on file. And I'm going to put the file path of my JPEG. Once I do that, if I hit render, you don't really see much of a difference. However, that's because we have all this specular that's taking over all the reflections. So all I got to do is put my roughness all the way to one. So my object comes matte and now we can see our color pass. So you can see that I painted it right on that crevice. So now that we know that this works and see how it, how we go from one program to the other, I'm going to go back to Photoshop and continue painting my map. So to create this dirt, I really like to paint harsh lines first and then kind of use the smudge tool to smudge it in between. So I don't get something so perfect. I just use the different preset brushes inside of Photoshop and you could always download more brushes online to use in Photoshop. So I'm going to speed up the video and I'm going to skip the process of me painting everything. Once I have this painted out, I'm going to take this into Maya and you're going to see one really big issue. As you can see here, I have a very obvious seam where I have the cut on my 3D model is extremely obvious with my texture. And that's because my outer edges of my UVs don't match. So if I click on this edge here and I look at my UVs, it actually corresponds to two edges of my UV shell. Because I did a cut, that edge is technically one edge, but I have different color on both sides. Like the smudging of the dirt doesn't exactly match the other side of that edge. So this is why programs like Mari, Substance Painter are so useful because these are technical things that you don't have to worry about in those programs, but you do have to worry about in a program like Photoshop. So Photoshop does have a 3D painting capability. Photoshop doesn't have a smooth preview. So we're only going to be able to see this in Photoshop, kind of like boxy look. Now, this isn't really ideal for us to paint on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subdivide my mesh. So I'm going to add more topology up to the point where it looks exactly like my smooth mesh preview. Once I have the subdivisions, I'm going to export this as an OBJ. That's the file that that's the file type that Photoshop likes to see. So if you're missing OBJ in the file export selection, all you have to do is upload the plugin. So you can just come here to Windows, Setting Preferences, Plugin Manager, and search OBJ and just load it in. Once it's loaded, you can now go to File, Export Selection, look for OBJ in the drop down menu. Once you find it, name your file and hit Save. You then want to undo your subdivisions because we don't need our mesh to be this dense. In Photoshop, we're then going to open the OBJ file that was created. Photoshop is going to prompt you to use a 3D workspace. You can click yes. Don't worry about the material because we're using Arnold. We're not going to save any Photoshop type materials. We're only going to export the JPEGs from here at this end. So now that we have our 3D model inside of Photoshop and you can see it's all black by default. And in the layers, you should have one named the same as your Maya shader. So it should say something like AI standard shader if you haven't changed your Arnold shader name. When you click on that, if you come here to your properties panel in Photoshop, you select this little icon and select edit texture. Photoshop will open the UVs. This is what the UVs look like in Photoshop, but don't worry, it's not altering your Maya ones at all. So to see this better, I like to come here to Windows, Arrange, Tile All Vertically, so I can see the model and UV side by side. I then open my colored version Photoshop file. So I had duplicate my color layers and I merged them together. You don't have to do that. You can take in just your dirt 
layer or your smudge layer. You can do one layer at a time. For purposes of this video, I just merged my color layer. Once I do that, you can see it's placed on the Photoshop UV file. However, the scale is different. So the Photoshop UV by default is 1K versus the one that I did is 2K. All I got to do is change the canvas size. So I'll just snug my map right into place with this new canvas size and just save the file. The second I save this file and I click onto my 3D Photoshop file, you can see that my texture is now applied to the 3D model. So the move tool now allows me to rotate around my object in Photoshop. And in Photoshop has this sort of light source. So if you click on this, you can now move the light around. So I like to put the light directly on wherever I'm going to paint and just have it aim straight at it. So the first thing we got to do though is move around and find our crease or seam that's super obvious. Once we find it, I move the light into that position aim it directly, and I'll just start painting and smudging my tools so I can clean up that seam. You can see it's pretty straightforward from here. All your smudge tool and other types of tools that you have in the 2D mode is just right here under this dot, dot, dot. So as I move around on different angles, I just make sure that I paint and try to clean up those edges. And as I move around, I also move my light source. So I'll paint like the front view first, and then I'll start tilting my camera up and down kind of looking at it at different angles just to make sure that I cover all the edges and all the different angles of that painting. Once I have that, I can just save this file. It automatically updates that Photoshop UV file that was created. I save that one as well. And I can export this as a JPEG now and test it out in Maya. When we go back to Maya, you can see that the color map looks much better and doesn't have that super visible scene. I can still go back to Photoshop and keep adjusting, but now that I got my seams perfect, I'm going to try not to mess with that. So I'm going to try to leave those outer edges of my UV shells the way that they are and just clean up any paint that I want to change in the middle of the shells. Once I have that color layer that I'm happy with, I can now work on the specular map. In this case, everything that is yellow, I want it to be reflective. And everything that is dust, I don't want it to reflect. I want it to have less reflection because dust is covering it up. So when we look at our specular roughness, we know that a value of zero means the max reflection that it can have. Now when we set it to one, it makes a matte kind of look. So in Maya, these numerical values can be translated to color value as zero to one. So zero is completely black, one is completely white, and every number in between is a different shade of gray. You can think of it as percentage also. So white is 100%, black is 0%, and all the percents in between is gray. So taking that same principle, we're going to create a map where everything we want to reflect will be black and everything we want matte is going to be white and everything that's dust is going to be kind of a gray color. So in Photoshop, this is pretty easy to do. So I'm going to get all my color layers and either merge them or adjust them one by one. In this case, I'm going to merge them for the specular pass, all the layers except for my scratches. It's my base color, my dirt, and my dust. I'm going to merge those layers together and create a new layer. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn down saturation so I get my image black and white. Now you can see that my dirt is black and the stuff that I want specular is white, but I actually need the reverse. So I'm going to put an invert inside of Photoshop. So the last adjustment I'll put is levels. So I'm really going to create a high contrast image here. So I'm going to have very stark difference between black, white, and gray, just so I get a lot of variation and differences in my specular. So I'm not going to put this into Maya just yet. And the next thing I'm going to do is create my bump map. A bump map is something that is only calculated during render time and creates this sort of fake appearance that there is that part of the surface is lifted up or pushed in. So it doesn't require any extra geometry. It's just something done on texture and it kind of creates the illusion of something rising or lowering inside of the model. And because bump is fake, we only ever use a bump map for something very subtle. And since the dust and the scratches are very minor, a bump map is perfect for this situation. In this case, black means no bump and white means the maximum amount of bump. So I'm going to make my scratches black. So they're going to be right on the surface. And then everything else, I'm going to make it different shades of gray until I get to my dirt creases that I still want white because those are like the most amount of dirt. So that's probably going to have the most piling up. So. To make the bump map, I'm then going to make a new layer with a midpoint gray. This is going to be my base color. 
I'm then going to duplicate all the layers that consist of my dust. I'll use a saturation to turn it black and white, and then I'll invert to make sure that they're white and not black, because those are the areas that are going to be lifted up. Then I'm just going to duplicate my scratches layer and turn it black. Once I have that, I have my bump map ready to be saved and imported into Maya. And that concludes our video. A virtual high five and a round of applause for learning something new. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Also check out our links below for some cool CG stuff, our social media pages, and our Patreon page. I'll see you in the next video.